We've now uh, entered into España, the Spanish steppes, or more properly, this is the Piazza de España, the Spanish square. It begins right here, and it goes all the way down to that uh, ochre building beyond the palm tree. It's a pretty big square. And the Spanish steps are to the right. We'll be looking at those shortly. This neighborhood is a wonderful neighborhood uh, for shopping. There's about, uh, let's say, five streets in parallel, beginning here with Via Fratina, it goes over Via Condote, Via Carote, and they go down for about five blocks. So you're looking at about 25 square blocks of shopping district. And you could say this is the shopping center of Rome, this area here. Not so much the historic center, but 18th century and 19th century buildings, and very much filled with beautiful shops, upscale as well as ordinary, and nice restaurants as well too. But before we sit down, this is really a prime hour for being out. Here we are in the middle of the shopping area. You'll see there's a fountain right in front of you at ground level. It's like a sinking ship. That was done by Bernini's father. Uh, we're gonna take about a half an hour and we're gonna uh, walk. Now, if you don't wanna walk, you can just sit on the steps. And that's interesting too, just watching all the people go by. And uh, by half an hour from now, we'll be back. Let's come this way. Uh, there's another really excellent restaurant behind me, Restaurant 24, uh, down this lane on the right side, about halfway down the block. It's the first restaurant you see. And well, I've had many a lovely meal in there. So if you should find yourself over here in Spain um, in the evening, possibly tomorrow or the, or the night after, as a chance you might, that's a restaurant to consider, Restaurant 24. Now, we're gonna walk back to the hotel tonight after dinner. You'll feel much better after sitting down and eating, obviously. And if you don't feel like it, you take taxis. But it's a lovely walk, it's about one hour. We'll take our time, get ice cream halfway. <laughs> An hour. Uh, yeah, because we're gonna go slowly. And let's continue down a few blocks, then we'll go over to Via de Condotti, and we'll walk back up towards the steps. Now we have arrived at the Corso which is really the main street of the city. There are several busy shopping streets here in Rome. Via Tritone we cross, Via Nazionale are also very busy streets. But the Via del Corso is running right through the heart of Rome. It's about just over a mile long, straight all the way. It used to be for uh, racing horses in ceremonial occasions. It was always a busy commercial street as well. And as you see today, there's shops all the way along it. And lots of pedestrians, lots of people out, especially this time of day. This is the, the magic time. During the day, there's cars zipping up and down and lots of tourists. And oh, in the summertime, if you're here during the day, it's pretty hot. That's uh, the wrong time to be here in July at noon. Right now, it's very comfortable. Wonderful temperature. And what we're going to do is just walk over a couple blocks to the Via Condotti. That's the very fancy street with all the Gucci and Gucci and whatnot. And that'll take us right back to the Spanish Steps. And then we'll rejoin our group and then we'll go eat. And then after dinner, we're going to walk again through this neighborhood through a different street down Via Fratina. And that'll take us to uh, the Corso about four blocks further down. And then we'll continue to the hotel it's all flat, no steps or hills to climb, that away. Well now uh, we are at the Via Condotti, very fancy street. It's uh, named after conduits. There used to be a water pipe running under the street here. And there's the Spanish steps, that's where we're heading. Uh, we have to take a look here because this is the world's smallest country. No, this is not the Vatican. You might think the Vatican is the world's smallest country, or you might think Monaco, very good, is the, or Liechtenstein, or uh, so there's several others, San Romano, or what have you. This is the world's smallest country. It's a place you never heard of. It's the Sovereign Order of the Knights of Malta. It's not the nation of Malta, that's an island in the Mediterranean, that's a, a nation, that's a big place. 
But this is the sovereign order of the Knights of Malta, and they claim to be a sovereign territory. Now, that's somewhat disputable, but they, they, yeah, they issue license plates for their cars, and they issue passports, and certain businesses can be registered here. And, uh, well, they own the land that it's on, that's for sure. And maybe she's a citizen of the Sovereign Order of the Knights of Malta. I wonder if you'll stamp our passport. Yeah, stamp your passport, right? There it is right there. And it's uh, an outgrowth of the, the Knights from the Crusades. The Knights of St. John and all that. They've got the red flag with the white cross. You can see as we leave, there's a flag. And, well, there it is there, the, the emblem of the Sovereign Order of the Knights of Malta. So a little curiosity for you on the Via Condotti. Cafe Greco, an institution, and if you go inside and sit down in the back, it's quite lovely and a little expensive, but if you just stand at the counter and order your coffee, it's the same price as any coffee bar in town, because those prices are regulated by the government. So if you're standing up, actually that's a good point to remember now, in Italy in general, if you're standing up at a cafe, it's less expensive than if you're sitting down. When you sit down, it's a different price list. And you're paying for rent. You're paying for that seat. You're paying for the table. It's only fair. And they, <laughs> often they'll have the postings of the two prices. And you might wonder, why is there two prices there? One is for standing or takeout, and the other is for sitting. It's the same deal here. But we're going to be sitting tonight, that's for sure. Sometimes you want to pay that rent. <laughs> now, the restaurant that I've got in mind for us is uh, just over there with the white umbrellas at the far end behind the, the square, La Rampa. And it's 10 euro, and you'll like it. It's very nice. You choose what you want. This is a great spot. It's just near the Spanish Steps, and they have a fabulous buffet. It's an antipasto buffet, and, and then on to an ice cream snack already. This is the first day of our tour, and we are hungry for some gelato and one of the fine places to enjoy this great Italian ice cream is at Giliti. Oh, Giliti. <laughs> They've got lots of flavors here and one of the fun ways to approach that is to get some kind of flavor you're not familiar with. It's all in Italian so it's a little confusing but it's delicious. This gelato is served at a softer texture than American ice cream, so the flavor really comes through. Pomerena and chocolate. Good? Mm. Oh no. Coconut. Mm. Ooh. Coconut banana. Whoa. Panacata and uh, biscotti or something. Ooh. Something crazy and exotic. It's similar to ice cream, but it's just richer, creamier, a little softer, a little bit more delicious. here gives us some energy to continue with our walking tour of Rome. We're going to be bringing you into an evening stroll and showing you some of the night sights again here in Rome. Rome at night is very interesting. It's colorful, it's lively, it's totally safe. The shops are mostly closed but you can do a little window shopping along the way and there's lots of people out sitting at the cafes. People love to live outdoors in Rome. The restaurants are always bustling. There's endless choices for outdoor dining throughout most of the year in the city. Even if you come in the winter time to Italy, the weather is quite pleasant. And you don't have to have a big meal at these restaurants. You could just sit down and have a salad, have a plate of pasta, cost you about $10, and that's very reasonable, very satisfying. You can try and follow a map if you like when you're wandering around here in the center of the city, but you don't really need to. You can just toss that map aside and just wander. One of the great pleasures is just walking in these little alleys and discovering the little piazzas. This neighborhood just behind the Piazza Navona keeps going and going. You can wander for another couple hours in that direction and you'll run into more action, more activities, things to buy. A few shops are open and some sidewalk stalls will be open and of course the restaurants and cafes are open right through the early hours, usually 1 a.m., 2 a.m. 
And then we carry on a few blocks over to the Piazza Navona, the great outdoor living room of the city. It's a good place to have your portrait sketched or perhaps just buy a scenic original watercolor painting. Lots of artists are set up here and it seems like it's busier at night than it is during the day. Right up through about midnight, you'll find lots of people buzzing around in the beautiful Piazza Navona.